Welcome back, everybody. You are tuned in to Get Well Soon, the Red Pill content of Welly F, a.k.a. Moriarty. And for those of you out there that aren't familiar with home improvement, one of the, I would say, very blue-collar, nuclear family, golden era TV sitcoms that I grew up on is, you know, it's not, nothing to brag about. I mean, the show wasn't amazing or anything. I think one of the one of the coolest characters that a lot of people may know is Wilson. He was the next door neighbor. He was the guy that usually would drop some conventional wisdom here and there. I can never remember if 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 Wilson was married or not, but <laughs> something tells me that he was. If he wasn't married, he was definitely a MGTOW kind of guy, and he pretty much just was at peace with being in his home and you know if he can give some guidance to somebody he enjoyed giving it to Tim due to the fact that Tim was a guy that was married and had three kids in an era where being a man and being a father was still something to be cherished not saying that's not the case now, but obviously we know that we live in a time right now where third and fourth wave feminism has basically slowly erased the need for a man. And, you know, whether you have noticed it or not, you will hear more women willing to go into surrogate situations or go into situations where they adopt or just maybe even co-parent with the best friend. I, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't really found any data saying that that's something that is happening, but I'm almost certain if I dig a little bit that there'll be, there'll be plenty of cases of two homegirls maybe just kicking it, just, you know, wanting to raise a kid, maybe even adopting a kid that was a family member, you know, but once again, we're in 2020 and the need for a father figure is constantly being denied. It's constantly being, we're, we're constantly being reminded that the father figure isn't needed. And it's not a reminder that is necessarily a true reminder. It's, it's, um, it's just a forced reminder. They're letting us know that they don't need us and they will do whatever it takes to devalue us. I was, I was on Reddit earlier and I was just scanning and I came across this Bumble post by some chick, and I went ahead and scratched out her face. I can tell you one thing. She, she, it was a picture of a, a woman, didn't have any makeup on. She's obviously at a pool. She's enjoying herself. But obviously, her, bump, her Bumble tag, in my opinion, is disrespectful. And that's, that's why I came to record today, because I felt like I just, once again, felt like I just wanted to have a little rant. She says making the same amount of money as a man is still never paying for a date. All right. I've realized more and more that women brag about this because they know that men are getting the shitty end of the stick in this situation. When I was doing my IG live the other day, you know, I kept hearing, you know, the term high value woman. I kept hearing about, you know, women needing to do this and men needing to do this to keep a woman. Just a lot of, and obviously it was it, on my IG lives. I'm a lot more in the middle and I just, you know, play the, I play my cards right when I'm having a conversation and it's a, a mass female listening audience. It, definitely not cucking it up or anything like that. But I'm 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 an open ear because in that mind in that in that setting I'm observing. So as I was observing some of the comments and listening to them talk, one thing that was interesting to me was that I asked a question about a high value woman and I, I basically said who gives the woman that value? And pretty much all the women could agree that they said, you know, I give myself that value. And the reason I'm saying this, and before I get to the point, the real point of this video, is because I've realized that the term high value woman and the mindset of I'm going to give myself the value is totally narcissistic and arrogant as shit. 
Because I'm sorry, if I go to a car dealership and I'm shopping for a car, it's not necessarily the car dealer or the car salesman that puts that that the value on that car per se. It's more along the lines of what the market deems as valuable when I assess that car. So if I'm looking at a 2020 Toyota Camry and it has all the gadgets, all the gizmos needed to assure me that it is worth a high value, I'm basically saying the manufacturer is the person that put together this valuable vehicle, but at the same time, it's the market that deems this car valuable. So if I'm talking to an overweight single mom that's only attractive with makeup on and she has a shitty attitude, she's manipulative, she thinks she's smarter than I am, like that does that type of that description right there has very low value in the dating market. And I and I told myself that I was going to, you know, talk talk on the podcast about dating economics and people just realizing that the dating scene is a market and it is very similar to the economics that we're dealing with today whether people want to agree with it or not. And with that being said, as you see, the title of this episode is Men are human doings, not human beings. And I hear a lot of guys in the Red Peel community and the MGTOW community referencing this a lot. They call themselves human doings. And when you see young women on Bumble, Tinder, and all these, you know, OkCupid's or whatever, all these other dating sites, and you see their demands, you see that they're bold enough to say what they want of men, you realize that they don't look at us like beings. And I'm pretty sure you've heard me say this before. Men are simply utilities. We are tools. That's all we are. <laughs> we are there to fix their emotional and physical problems. That really, That's really it. And we're literally there to be their punching bags nine times out of ten. So... The, that's one of the reasons why I felt like it was necessary to reference home improvement in this because for all of you that don't know, I mean, that was one of the bases of the show. Although his home life wasn't easily fixed, he can go into his he, he was a, he was a talk he was basically had his own TV show with his partner Al. Al was definitely a blue pill simp. I thought when I was growing up the whole time I thought Al was gay. But that's a story for another day. But <laughs> The fact of the matter is, I mean, although they both were blue pill, the fact of the matter is what he was doing on his show was the actual process of fixing things. And when he went home, he actually couldn't fix those things. But long story short, overall, the men are look at it, looked at as fixers. That's what men are looked at it for, like... Honestly, we don't serve any other purpose. And it's sad to say, but it's to me, it's a realization that I came across, you know, in the past five years. When I turned about 29, 30, I realized that if I want, and at that time, 29, 30, I was still sort of interested in a relationship. And I just told myself, you know, hey, I need to be a better fixer. I need to be able to do more. I need to be able to do things to increase my value. Because once again, when it comes back to the market, Something that we talked about on the IG Live a couple of times is, you know, you keep hearing this argument, hey, can a woman cook? Can a woman cook? Well, can a man build a house? Can a man build a house? Well, one of the best arguments you're going to hear is, well, I don't got to build a house every day, but somebody got to cook every day. And me personally, I think the whole cooking thing, as you see, even with what we're going through right now in America and all around the world, one of the essential businesses today open in most places are grocery stores and drive through restaurants and restaurants in general because when it's all said and done people can go grocery shop men can go like grocery stores are not female only <laughs> trust me anybody can go in a grocery store and get pre-made food if they need to 
Also, if you want to get pre-made food, you can go to a drive through restaurant. You can go to a restaurant with a to-go order. So the necessity for somebody to need to cook every day is also pretty false because it's not necessary. But for a man to be required to build a home or to change a flat tire or to, to do anything around the home, it's 2020. A lot of stuff, and I've said this too, a lot of things have become automated. There are a lot of gig jobs out there where people will come and do this for the convenience of you not having to do it. You probably take three hours to do it. There are professionals that could do it in 90 minutes. So just keep in mind, men are fixers. Men are only needed in times of peril. Like literally all the conversations I've had with women recently have come down to the fact that, man, I don't want to be lonely anymore. And like if you watch my video yesterday, which I know that video wasn't the greatest, but I just I, I saw it and I immediately had to respond. But the fact of the matter is the woman on there, she says it plain. She says it. I want a warm body. I want a man next to me. It's not that she desires a man's presence in the form of him being a conscious thinking being. She wants him there like he's a fucking dog. She just wants him there like he's an animal. Somebody to serve her when she's in isolation or in need because that emotion needs to be erased because what is erasing a woman's emo emotional state that's a man fixing a woman's emotional state because once again men are always there to do something we're not allowed to just be see women are allowed to just be that's why they can make these demands on on bumble tinder and okay cupid because women have the vagina women just are women so therefore we they need to be served in order for a man to operate in this world, in order for a man to have any value in this world, he must be doing something. He must be a guy doing enough to make six figures. He must be a guy doing enough to have a six pack. He must be a guy doing enough to be labeled a good father, so on and so forth. I'm pretty sure you got my point. So yeah, remember, man, when you navigate through society as a man that most of the time people don't see you as a human being, they see you as a human doing. And personally, for me, I know that I'm a human being and I know that my existence is enough. Yes, I may do things to increase my value, but I'm doing that for my own internal pleasure. Never for these thoughts, never for these whores, never for these feminists. I do it for me. And with that being said, until we meet again. Thank you.